A blight hit Fox Hollow, eating into every part of life, down to the roots. The factories in town had jobs for anyone who wanted one. Everywhere you went, the churches, the schools, the stores, you met folks with a smile, but not anymore. Jobs became scarce. People stayed indoors. The skies were gray and the winds blew in a way that wore down to your bones. That wind, there was always a sound to me I, I couldn't shake. A voice that cried. Three years now it was like this. Three years is a long time when you're a girl in high school like me. My name's Happy. My parents gave me that name because I was such a happy baby. When I was a little kid, teachers would ask my name and they would smile and laugh. Now they just scowl. Three years ago, three friends of mine, Jimmy, Scott, and Felicia, disappeared. One afternoon when I was out sick, they were walking home from school, joking around, having a little fun. Then they disappeared. The police looked everywhere. Their parents were crushed. So was the whole town. People put up signs about the missing kids. A mural was painted outside their school. Miss Bain had three birch trees planted, one for each child on the village green. Well, this surprised me because I thought she was a mean old shrew. Everyone did. Jimmy even joked that she was a witch, the way she shouted at us kids and waved her crooked old cane. She used to holler at my friends for walking on her grass, teasing her dog. Maybe I was wrong about her. Every day I walked past those trees, listening to the cry in the wind, missing my friends. Some thought the trees were a beautiful gesture. I thought they looked sad. Someone decided to add to the tribute by placing one of each child's winter glove on a branch with the idea that they would come back with the other glove to make a matching set. Year after year, the single gloves remained. Peaceful, aren't they? said Miss Spain. She had sidled next to me as I stood looking at the trees. I was startled, I suppose, I said. Do you know birch trees, she said, are symbolic of hope and new beginnings, a tree that carries ancient wisdom and yet appears young forever. I shrugged. You're happy, right? She asked. Friends of theirs, weren't you? I nodded. I hate to impose, but could you walk me home? I'm a frail old woman, and I fear someone might try to take my purse. Also, I'd like to show you something. I wanted to say no, but she lived close to my home, and she was small and weak. I, we walked slowly to her dark, looming house. Her dog, a schnauzer, was happy to see her, but growled when I came in. You can learn a lot about a person how a dog reacts to them, she said. Happy, can I get you something to drink? Maybe a snack? And thanks for helping me get home. No, I really need to get home, I said. My parents will be worried. You miss them, don't you, Happy, she said. Your friends. Do you think their parents were worried when they didn't come home after a few hours? Then the next day? Then the next? I didn't like the way that question made me feel. I felt, I felt frozen, so cold. I have to go, I said, walking to the door. You weren't there that day, Miss Bain said. Like you usually were. How did you know that? I asked. You always were, she said. You were the kids who teased my dog. Thought it was funny to disrespect an old woman. I reached for the door and noticed a small table to the side of it. On it, Miss Bain had placed her keys in a silver bowl with change next to her phone. Also, she had carefully laid out 
three mismatched gloves. I opened the door and ran. The wind blew with that same painful howl. From the sidewalk, I looked back at the house and I saw the image of Miss Bain, a dull light forming around her gnarled cane. I sprinted away, but each step became harder. By the time I reached the park, I couldn't run at all. I screamed for my mom and dad. I screamed, help! But no one could hear me. The next time you drive through Fox Hollow, you may notice a few things different from other small towns. Hardly anyone is happy there. The skies are always gray and there are four birch trees in a row on the town green, each with a glove hanging from a branch. If you listen to the wind by those trees, you'll hear a blend of empty howls. One which sounds just like me.